Clark with Montana Team Nutrition and welcome to the September School Nutrition Update and Chat. If you would, wouldn't mind um, entering your name and name of any attendees, your school name, this school district name, and at least one email address into the chat. We will make sure we send a follow-up email message to you about it. So during this um, today's chat, we were going to go over a little bit about the uh, new flexibilities that USDA has provided. And Caroline Olson and Kim Lloyd and Deb Jones and Aaron Turner are all on from OPI School Nutrition so that we have to answer questions. So I will turn it over to OPI School Nutrition. Hi, this is Kim. Uh, Caroline and Deb, if you don't mind, I'll take a stab at this. And if you have anything to add, um, please feel free. So uh, we found out on Monday that the USDA has extended the Summer Food Service Program through December 31st, 2020, which is great. Um, the waivers that we're, we were operating under this summer are also extended. They are very similar to what you have as an option for NSLP, um, or if you were operating the Summer Food Service Program this spring and summer, you can continue doing the same model that you had. And um, there's no requirement that you operate the Summer Food Service Program. You are welcome to stick with the National School Lunch Program and continue as you have been too. Uh, we do not have guidance yet if you can do both programs. So right now the option is to switch to all summer food service program or stick with all school lunch program. And uh, we are still working on getting some more guidance. So if you have questions, we are happy to take them down now. But we do um, have a procedure now for if you are interested in signing up for the summer food service program to follow and we can get you set up with the applications and maps and uh, move forward. I think there's more on the next slide maybe? Oh yeah, sorry. That's okay, thank you. So yes, yeah, the first step and uh, we sent out a few emails through a few different lists yesterday through the uh, school lunch program list. Chris sent out a her newsletter, I sent out my summer food service program newsletter, and we also sent to our partners this link, but um, we can, you'll also get it probably in this, the program resources from the chat today. So the first step is to fill out this form to indicate that you are interested in switching back over to the summer food service program, or maybe you are interested in uh, starting up the summer food service program if you did not operate it this spring and summer. So that's the first step is to fill out this form. And then you will um, be contacted by your regional specialist and they will talk to you about next steps and um, about your program. And if you're still unsure which program, it's still worth filling out this form and then talking through with your regional specialist. Um, please continue to collect free and reduced price applications. And uh, this is still important because we have no idea what's gonna happen in December. Um, or once program funding runs out, we may be um, asking schools to switch back over to the school lunch program. So it's very important to still continue with those processes that you've been doing during the school lunch program. And next slide. So there is the uh, eligibility component still with the summer food service program. We do have an area eligibility waiver if you do not have a school that has more than 50% free and reduced price kids, then we may be asking you to prove a need. So the reason to switch over to the summer food service program would not be because it's easier um, and because you get more money, which we all want schools to get more money, but the purpose of the summer food service program is to feed children in need. So if you do think that you have a situation where kids in your community are not being fed through the National School Lunch Program, this is another reason to switch over to the Summer Food Service Program because it allows all kids age 18 and under to receive free meals. So if you have a more than 
uh, free and reduced, you're welcome to sign up for summer food. If you do not, but you think that there is the need in your community for this free meal program, then definitely uh, feel free to fill out that form and go through the process to get signed up. So again, yeah, start with filling out the survey and continue to collect free and reduced price applications. Kim, I thought we could maybe go to the website if you want to show them. Um, let me just find it. Can you see this? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Right now, I still see your PowerPoint. Let me just see if I can. Uh, I thought you might want to show them where the surveys are. Can you see that? Yes. Uh, yep, I can. I think Caroline was updating these. Um, Caroline, do you have any tips on where to find things on our website? Or you just had it up, Katie? Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the website. And if you hit this school year, school food service program form, you go to this form. Is this the form they need to fill out? Correct. Yep. There you go. You're in the right spot, Katie. It's very easy. It's email, school name, your name, phone number, and you're requesting it. And then what waivers, uh, it just lists what waivers you want to take advantage of. Um, if, it, if you know that you want to take advantage of the area eligibility waiver or the meal pattern waiver, those are, um, you know, there's a little bit further process of review and, um, and approval. And so that's why it parses those out um, and you'll get contacted after you turn this in by your regional specialist to um, get any follow-up information we might need. So yeah, this is step one in the process is completing this survey. Okay, and then those are the waivers. This is the map of the specialists in case you don't know who your specialist is. Can they see that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Something yep. good to print out and put it on your wall just so it's handy. And just to uh, clarify, filling out the form does not mean that you are now ready to start the summer food service program. The important thing is to wait until you are contacted by your regional specialist and then you will be asked to update your MAPS application. So um, you are not able to claim meals under the Summer Food Service Program until your application has been approved. So do we want to take questions on this topic? Um, do, does anybody have questions? You can unmute yourself or put it in the chat and we'll have people watch the chat. In the meantime, if um, waiting for any questions that might come up, would you mind going back to the web page that you were at, Katie? Sure. The back to school. <clears throat> okay, so that is right. Right. Let me find it here. Where'd it go? Oh, it just got X'd out by accident. But if you hit. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. Then I'll go back to. Um, if you hit Control Shift T. Try that. And then hit it again. There we go. So that just opens up a closed tab. So yes, so I wanted to just point out that um, on this area of the website, this is kind of like the go-to for schools. Um, you know, this obviously at the very top, it has all the latest waiver information and the survey. Um, but <clears throat> below, uh, you know, we have, we've tried to collect all of our helpful resources in one spot, just, you know, as a reminder, because we've done some shifting around with the website. Um, and this is where, you know, all of our resources that are geared towards reopening or, you know, food service adjustments, different models, um, you know, operating during a pandemic, all that is located here, as well as those last two links 
in the helpful links and resources. Those are where you can regularly go and see any resources that come out of a chat or a webinar Wednesday. We will house those there. Just a reminder while, um, while we um, go through the, the waiver area that this is just a general good spot to, to know where to access on our website because it is all of our um, resources kind of cultivated in one spot. Any questions? Well, I have one question. So um, if you end up going on the summer food service program, if you're approved for it, um, does your counting and claiming change? Does it go back to just counting students under 18 or children under 18 instead of categorizing them, correct? Or any Yeah, that's a great question, Katie. Yep, so the uh, program guidance for the summer food service program requires that we keep daily meal counts for the summer food service program. And since we're not worried about what the eligibility of the children is after you have qualified for the program, all you need to do is keep a tally of every kid that comes to receive a meal. And then you'll count all those up at the end of the month and submit your claims for the month that you're claiming for. Thank you for that. Okay, if there aren't any questions, other questions, um, I'll just go through some of the upcoming um, webinar. Just wanna make sure everybody is aware of next Wednesday, September 9th at one o'clock. Um, there will be a back to school meal guidance webinar where um, Kim will go over and Deb Jones will be on and Camille to go over this in more detail. And there will be a registered sanitarian, Alicia Love from the um, State Department of Health to, be, to answer any food safety um, questions. So you'll wanna um, stay tuned to that. Due to feedback from everyone on Lunchline about the time of the Wednesday webinar, OPI has um, released another survey to complete, to give your input on what time is a better time to offer the webinars if one o'clock isn't good. So that our time change, our time for the Wednesday webinar and probably the chat will be changing based on um, the survey results. So be sure to complete that. I did want to just follow up from a previous chat about emergency meal planning. Um, there is a wonderful resource from Colorado School Nutrition Association at this link, and it does have shelf-stable menu ideas, which um, I think I just copied, but this is a handout copied to show what things you could have that would be shelf-stable in each of the five food groups to allow you to have some items on hand in case possibly your staff have to be out on leave and you have to have other people uh, be serving your meal. So it's a really good idea to have an emergency menu based on shelf stable ideas, uh, shelf stable items, and to have a, a plan really for staffing if um, you have to, if some of your staff have to be out. Why didn't it bail? Oh, it didn't? Darn no. it. Okay, let me try again. Sorry. Hmm, let me see what's going on here. Can you see that? No, we can. I wonder why. Hmm. So this, um, let's see if I can go. Can you see that one? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know why it's not advancing. This is the list for, of the shelf stable items by the five food groups. So if you do want to have some ideas on having items in a menu planned for a week in case of an emergency that your staff have to be out, this um, might be a really good idea. 
This is an emergency feeding menu from Cherry Creek School District, which is in Colorado. You can see that they did it for breakfast and lunch. Um, it's very um, basic and simple of <laughs> sandwiches, cold items. Um, but this is what they, they also have. So just wanted to, to follow up with that. The CDC has updated their guidance for schools and um, at this, it's the same website that they've had. And they did um, include some updates for school food service. Just recognizing that um, you all are, are so vital to helping nourish students and children around the country. But to reiterate, just to, to a, avoid offering any self-serve food or drink options, any, you know, as you know, the food bars, salad bars, condiment bars, or drink stations, um, while ensuring students with allergies are provided, you know, um, foods that um, are safe for them. Making sure that children are eating meals outdoors or in classrooms and maintaining social distance. While they don't um, recommend masks here, they do recommend wearing masks in throughout the school. We just didn't put it um, in the section of food service. Making sure, obviously, as you know, um, hand washing, good hand washing, along with a hand sanitizer, um, having teachers and all staff and children use those frequently. And um, again, if the dining rooms are used, just to make sure that uh, six feet of distance is maintained and regular cleaning and disinfecting tables and chairs between uses. And um, just recommending that um, children do not share foods or utensils. And either using disposable food service items is an option or ensuring that non-disposable food items and equipment are handled by staff with gloves and wash with dish soap and hot water or in a dishwasher. And again, frequent hand washing. I'm sure this is all a review for you as far as um, you are all versed in food safety very, very um, regularly and, and very well. Just wanted to make sure everybody has the websites to OPI's School Nutrition Back to School Resources, which Caroline just went over, and then the main um, phone number and um, this link goes to the map that's showing all the school nutrition specialists. I did wanna just um, share with you some photos of one school's meals, Kathy and Cheryl from Shoto School District, which is sort of uh, north of Helena or sort of on the way to Glacier, I know that. <laughs> yeah, north of Great Falls. Um, they are using the trays, and if you look over here, you can see they purchased some of the Cambro trays that have the lids because they really wanted to do hot foods. Their mission is always to really serve fresh meals to students, especially they say that kids can get processed foods anywhere. They want to have serve fresh foods in their school. So you can see that they're, uh, I think that the main entree is a stromboli. Um, with ham and cheese, stromboli, with salad and, and raw veggies. They even have the purple, I think it's so purple cauliflower and green cauliflower with some, it looks like banana pudding. So they wanted to um, share these photos. And uh, so we'd love to see additional photos of your meals. Um, we appreciate Kathy and Cheryl sending this, these to us. And then just a um, plug for, if you're looking to learn more about Farm to School, um, we're um, helping host two Farm to School Expos in October, which will be virtual. They are all virtual um, October 2nd from 10 to 2 with a noon to 1 lunch break is um, called Farm to School During COVID. And that will be more on education in the classroom and some food service um, topics. Then the Farm to Tray Tour on October 27th is really fo focused on procurement and um, you know, um, purchasing local foods for your school nutrition program. And that's from three to five. So these will be virtual. You can register for them and um, they will be, I'm sure, recorded. So they'll be available afterwards also. 
Okay, any um, additional questions or um, comments? Just feel free to unmute yourself. Please, Caroline. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity for anyone who's on the call um, to mention FFVP. Um, it's been an interesting rollout this year with uh, not hearing from the USDA uh, until about last week for allocations. So if you are wondering um, whether or not FFVP is available to you and your sites, um, I would encourage schools to go into maps and if you see an FFVP application item under your sponsor application, um, that will need to be filled out to, uh, you know, to go forward and for me to be able to allocate you dollars. So if normally you have FFVP schools and you are like, hang on a second, I don't see, you know, I don't see SS qualifying. That doesn't mean that you don't. It just took an incredibly longer amount of time to get that info from, from the federal level, oh, sorry, from the federal level. And uh, so it's just been a little bit of a disjointed rollout, but um, I can't give you allocated dollars in the system until that FFPP application is filled out. So just don't forget to do that if you want to participate. Shell, this is Kelly with School Nutrition. I saw that you completed your school year. Oh, Kelly, you're not on mute. Form. So I just wanted to call um, and get you set up for the next step. So there, was <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Um, anyways, so that's probably one of my calls that I just got about the um, about sending over to SFSP. Anyways, so just a reminder about FFVP. You have not been forgotten. You most likely still qualify if you historically have. Uh, it just, you know, it just was, was hard this year. So don't forget to go into your sponsor app. Even if you've already turned it in, you'll need to fill out that FFVP portion. And if you have any questions or you're just not sure, please feel free to give me a call. I'll enter my phone and my email into the chat. Um, and I'm happy to uh, get you taken care of. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Any other announcements or questions? Okay, well, um, we can keep it short today. And um, we will make sure, I think by next month, we'll have a new link to the chat because yes. I didn't even think about that, that on the calendar, there's no, um, Place for the password and we've been using the same chat um, invite since probably April which so we can change that but um, we'll get this uh, we'll get the recording up on the chat uh, website in case people want to but I think um, this is a good lesson to learn <laughs> and next Wednesday we'll have a lot more information so I'm hoping uh, we'll have more people, you know, be able to reach through it. So, okay. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, Brittany. Or does anybody else have anything they want to say before we close? And if anybody's on the phone, I want to make sure I have your email. Can anybody on the phone, um, if you're a school nutrition director or 